five minutes to talk about the three-hour masterpiece. Wish me luck. Oh. BBC One! BBC Two! <laughs> um, at the risk of making him blush, why this guy? Uh, I'm trying to think of a clever answer about who was unavailable. <laughs> but I can't believe it. Well, here we are. This is atomic test. The Russians have a bomb. We're supposed to be years ahead of them, but... So. The truth is, I've I, all of us in Hollywood, all, every director knows this guy sitting next to me, who, for the listeners, is Robert Downey Jr., if they're not watching the picture. Um, he's, he's one of the greats. And, you know, of late, I've seen his superhero chops, his incredible charisma. I am Iron Man. In an amazing series of films, and, and he's become one of the great movie stars of our time. And I... But for me, I, I really wanted to see him lose himself in a character and, and just show the world. And I wanted to be involved in that process of showing the world that he's just one of the great actors. So now the race is against the Soviets. Not unless we start it. Robert, they just fired the starting gun. I mean, I'm sure everyone's saying this, but I forgot it was you. Sometimes I thought you were Jeremy Irons. Just for a second? Brother, thank That's you. That's harsh, man. <laughs> to Jeremy. <laughs> Wait, Jeremy Arms in what? <laughs> I was going to say, you got to be more specific. You dead ringers here? Yeah, or, no, on, yeah. I'll take it. I want to ask something, I've not got much time, about the number of cuts in this film. Mm. Because what was the assembly for this? <laughs> As in how long? Was how long? I don't know whether I should admit this on Radio 1, but we don't really do an assembly. Um, my editor, Jen Lane, actually, uh, second film I'm done with her, she came onto the film after we wrapped because she was busy on Wakanda Forever. As you did. So she came on and we started working together with the dailies, uh, which is, is a process I really enjoy. We go back to the beginning, we watch absolutely everything, and then we start to put it together. And it's a very, very complicated film to put together. Yeah, isn't it just? I mean, I can only imagine <laughs> my mind blows just thinking about it. And the opening shot is raindrops. How set in stone was that for you? Not set in stone at all. It's not in the script, actually, uh, which for me is very rare. It's very mm. rare. It's a sort of symbol and a symbolic representation that started to insert itself in the filming. I'm a very controlled and controlling filmmaker, and uh, I don't often shift something as important as that, but it was something that just kept pulling us in and pulling us in, and we kept repeating in the filming, myself and Hoyte van Hoyte, mm. um, and Killian, you know, just finding this. And working with Jen in the edit suite relatively late, we realized that, that that's exactly the opening. He's not bad, is he? He's not bad. It's, I mean, you don't know the half of it, brother. <laughs> I, everything that has ever been done at the highest level on any other film I've ever done mm -hmm. was all done simultaneously and then some. Mm. I came in to do ADR, where in a film of this scope, you usually have three days of work. He had one line. <laughs> They only, and it wasn't even a line that they didn't record correctly. It was a line that he wanted to add from a previous draft that he remembered because nothing escapes him. It's bananas. Yeah. And you have to live it to believe it. But it's all, it's not about control. It's about his dedication to this art form and bringing it in the most powerful format possible. And I don't want to give anything away. It's bananas. But there's a sensational yeah. moment of audio when the test occurs. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. I would love to have been in the room, the ADR room, as you said, recording those voices. Extraordinary. You must have felt incredible capturing those. I have no comment to add here other than that. No, I'll just say that we we didn't capture them in ADR. We we used you the son. real recordings. So See? You know, yeah. All right. One last thing. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine who works for QI, uh, so really knows his stuff, a big geek. Mm. I told him the incredible, wonderful fact that the IMAX reel of this film is 11 miles long. Mm. He discovered that it takes three hours to walk 11 miles on average. So you can watch Oppenheimer at the same time as you can walk it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to give that to you. Thank oh, you. man. Thank you. That will never leave me. In IMAX. Can I tell you, we finally got something back from the BBC. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> all this take, take, take with these interviews. And finally, finally. here's the fact for you. Um, yeah. I don't quite me. know what to do with that Just, fact, but it's interesting. With, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll stick it in your birthday card. Never forget, three miles long. So, yeah, okay, great. I smell meme. <laughs> 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 All oh right, boy. that's my closer. Yep, um, that was a freebie. Congratulations, dude! Yeah. Hey, thank Food. you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio One movies and TV podcast Screen Time on BBC Sounds, and you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum. <laughs>